All right, thank you all for coming. It means a lot to me. Um, a lot of you have played an important role in my success. I guess you could say that. Um, so I had a little bell work coming in here. So two truths about me, um, and then a lie. Anybody want to guess? Except for the people who know. Like <laughs> Small, really big? Let me see. Those are fake. Yeah. <laughs> this one is the truth. Two front is fake. Knocked him out diving into a pool. Oh. <coughs> Did your bicycle accident with the car count? No, that's not it. Okay. No, oh. That was actually me crushing into a car. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 But the story we'll need to hear later. Yeah. 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 Boris, what are you doing? The other truth is that I have been run over by my own car. It was actually my brother-in-law. It was a uh, Malibu uh, car. Ran over my left leg and left arm. Uh, I was not prom king. I was kind of losing high school. I do that. Um, but anyway, today we're going to talk about, I guess I wanted to talk about my journey, how I got to where I am, why I want to be an ag teacher. Um, and then we also will talk about um, what I aspire to be as a teacher. Um, so I'm from Virginia. Um, I grew up in Virginia, um, I've always loved uh, nature, um, I didn't grow up um, in an agricultural, I grew up in suburbia, so I didn't have an agricultural background, um, nobody in my family is involved in agriculture in any way, really. um, but in high school I attended a technical center, so a vocational school, and I, I um, took some carpentry classes, which I really enjoyed, um, and also I will put this slide in here because um, my teacher, my carpentry teacher, um, he was a funny guy, but I remember him always really liking his job. Um, so I think that looking back on like, you know, how I came here um, and got to where I am, um, I think that played like, a pivotal point in maybe the, like, the career choices that I'm, I'm making. Um, so my first real, um, I know, a little bit of nudity, provocative. Um, my first real um, agricultural experience is I, li I lived and worked on an organic farm in um, Virginia, um, and that was my first experience with agriculture, and I really loved it. Um, I went there with my friend, um, and we had, we had no idea what we were doing, but we, we learned, and uh, we worked really hard, and we got to you know, talk, and it's a little bit different than a lot of direction agriculture, but it was, it was a really great experience, and that also sort of um, steered me on thinking to the, to the direction that I took. Um, I served a mission of the Mormon Church in Peru for two years, um, where I was also um, exposed to a lot of different agriculture, and also the social implications of, of agriculture in that livelihood, um, which I really, I really enjoyed that as well. So I got to see a lot, a lot down there, a lot of different agricultural practices. That <coughs> this is actually. Does anybody know what's going on in this picture? What? It's this one right here. Sorry. Does anyone know that? Sugar cane. Uh, they got some oxen right here, and they're actually um, this. Is, they got a yoke, and then this is the. Uh, they're they're walking around in a circle here, and they they put the sugar cane in here, and they press it so all the sugar comes out. Sugar comes out of liquid, and they pour it. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, after that, um, I I went to Brigham Young University in Idaho. And I studied production of horticulture. No. So I, when I came back from Peru, I, I knew that I wanted to do something with with plants and growing things. And I didn't know exactly what, but I really enjoyed my experience. I, I, I got, I feel like, a, a really great opportunity to, to study there. Um, while I was there, I worked um, in the orchard, <coughs> the orchard there. They had a, an heirloom apple orchard. There was 450 different varieties of heirloom apples. Um, and I developed an integrated pest management um, program um, for the orchard, using growing degree days and um, tracking the development of two pests that we had, the coddling moth and the oriental fruit moth. Um, for another agricultural experience, I got married, and Christina and I, for our honeymoon, lived on a farm in Hawaii for a month. Um, and so this is me uh, pruning some of the banana leaves. Um, this is, wouldn't that be great to wake up to that every day? Um, so this is like part of the, the farm there. Um, and then, yeah, it was it was a great time. Since then, like we, we sort of been trying to figure out what and how we want to be involved in agriculture because we knew what we did. Um, so this is just some experiences. Um, I did an internship with Brickmaker, which is a landscaping company, which is now called Right 
something. They got they sort of got mixed together with another large company. Um, and then upon graduation, I wanted to. I had this. I had a, an idea that I wanted to to teach agriculture, but um, I didn't take any agricultural education um, classes. So upon graduating with my bachelor's degree, we moved to New York where we had Bear, uh, the little one. Um, and while I was, I was working, and I also worked at uh, a BOCI school, which is a technical school um, in the horticulture program, which I loved it. Like I would, I would, uh, there, I went through a rough time up in, in New York in the winter time because it's cold, and I don't like cold. But I would, I would, when I would come back from teaching, like I would be happy because I, I like interacting with kids. I like, I like everything you have. So that's when I decided that I wanted to be an ag teacher, and I started to pursue. Um, that teaching accreditation. I came to, to Penn State. I've had some great experiences as well. This is um, in the INTED 820 class, International Agriculture and Development, um, where we went to Katia University um, in Costa Rica to learn about agriculture there. Um, anybody know what this is? That's where chocolate comes from, everybody. Um, <clears throat> So that was a really great experience. I loved it there. Um, while while I was there, so we went as a field, as a class trip. Um, I was starting to think about my, my thesis research and what I wanted to do. So I took a bus from Costa Rica up to Nicaragua um, to meet with um, an organization called Speed Progress that focused on youth and developing um, agricultural competencies and entrepreneurial skills, um, which I thought was really cool. So that's sort of we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, but this is my this. When, we, when we're teaching agriculture, we have to teach to a, a wide variety of different learners on different levels. Um, so I've had some experiences which I've talked about, but I think one of the greatest experiences is actually being a parent. Because you have to learn how to manage and uh, communicate with kind of humans. Um, and then hopefully, you know, teach some things, teach some things along the way. So Forrest and Barrett are here. Um, and so it's something I really enjoy as a dad, um, and I think I'll enjoy it as well. As trying to, to take the natural curiosity that is in human beings um, and, and nurture that, that creativity and, and uh, um, yeah, just like it. I think I love this picture because it's just like he's learning things, you know, he's, he's engaging. Yeah, I think that that's one of the things I really like about it. Um, here at Penn State, I've had the opportunity like, this past summer to work on a Penn State student farm. It was the first year um, we broke ground with a, a, a vegetable uh, garden farm. It was one acre. Um, and it was like the, it was an opportunity for me to put into practice, like really, because I had a lot of my like, um, in, in what we were, in what we were doing. Um, so I got to see like, kind of like a holistic view of a, a small farm management, um, which was a great experience. So this is something that I would actually like to implement um, in the high school. So that's one of my goals uh, as a becoming teacher is to have um, an on-farm, or on, on school property of a small street farm. Um, so here's some, some key courses, and then PCK is, stands for Pedagogical Content oh. Knowledge. So we not only have to know how to teach um, and, and, and principles of effective teaching, but also be um, proficient in the content. Um, and agriculture is a very large no. industry in animals and a lot of tools. Um, so some of these classes that I've taken here um, have helped me develop those pedagogical content. So what does that say? That may sound like an introduction to agriculture lesson plan title, but that's actually a question that I asked one of my um, classmates in my first, one of the first classes. I said, "Hey, you need to realize." So this is my only real like opportunity to know what FFA was in the polling data, right? You guys know. So I asked, "What is FFA?" And um, I got the response that it's, it's, it's uh, an, uh, a youth agricultural leadership program, um, and it stands for. Is that going to make sense? FFA. It stands for FFA, so it's nice to know. Um, how to be an effective teacher. I took this past semester with Dr. Foster. Um, so we learned a lot about um, effective teaching principles and focus um, on some educational theories, such as Rosenstein first, who came up with, uh, or who did a minute and a half of data collection about effective teaching. Um, and I'll talk about that, but. Um, also, we talk about how how to garner multiple intelligences, blooms, autonomy, and in general, how to be how to teach effectively. Um, 
um, how not to cut your face off with a bandsaw, learn the AED. Which I'm an important skill for people like faces. Um, international article inspected from the A20 that I talked about. Teaching populations with special needs. Um, I learned very minimally from that class. It was not a great class. I don't recommend it. You have to. You have to. In a lot of cases, but um, it was something that gave me, I think, a context for me to, to further study. Um, and special needs are. Uh, it can be anything, it doesn't have to necessarily mean that they're, they're really kind in school or anything like that, but they can also be exceptional students. And how we can um, engage them and empower them to learn more. Um, so, my education, I'll talk briefly about this as well. So, I got a Bachelor of Science degree um, in Production Horticulture from Birmingham University. I'm at a double minor in business and, and um, graduating. Uh, and now, I'm currently a Master's of Science candidate. Um, agriculture and essential education and international agriculture and development. Um, and my research, my thesis, um, has to do with supervised agricultural experiences, which is part, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but um, it's part of a total agricultural program um, in which the students um, decide on a project that is of interest to them and that they develop it and carry it out. So a few of my certifications also that I, I I received as part of my training is I had a CPR training, um, which I'm actually kind of excited to see some of my clients. Um, I also have OSHA 10 hour training um, uh, with uh, safety and, and occupational workplace, um, and then safe tractor machining operation program so I can actually teach kids how to track their tractor safely, believe it or not. Um, so professional development, so I had the opportunity to go to uh, Indianapolis this past, um, uh, they had a national FFA which was students who are in agriculture and FFA um, throughout the United States and also Puerto Rico is that um, they come to, to compete and have this really great event. Um, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Association of Agricultural Educators I'm also a part of, um, just recently out of town Alpha, agricultural um, the Association for International Agriculture and Rural Development, um, as well as uh, I actually had the opportunity. I'm not remember, but I had the opportunity to go to the World Food Prize, um, which is a, a meeting of uh, an international agriculture meeting to talk about um, progress that's been made in providing access to, to food for, for the global population. Um, so then this next part is. Who do I aspire to be as a teacher? So I'll talk a little about my teaching philosophy here. So um, I've sort of, like through this journey, I've, I've learned a lot about education. I, I think you, I, I, the more I learn about it, the more I love it. And uh, I think that it's a very powerful tool. So I've done um, some, my, my, my philosophy from other educational philosophers, Paul Freire, John Dewey, um, Plato, and of course, Mr. Sneebly. <laughs> um, um, but this is a quote um, that um, I really like this quote about education. I want to read this. There's no such thing as a neutral education pro uh, educational process. The education either functions as an instrument which is used to facilitate the integration of the younger generation into the logic of the present system and bring about conformity to it, or it becomes a practice of freedom, as Paul Freire the means by which men and women deal critically and creatively with reality and together discover how to participate in the transformation of the world. And I think that, to me, this is, this is the true goal of education, at least through my educational philosophy. I have here water being poured into a vessel, which is a critique of the current model, in which, uh, or the banking model, in which students are just Mommy. vessels to be filled with knowledge by the teacher, which I don't believe, but it's, it's sort of a... Uh, a mutual process, educa education is a mutual process in which both people, students and the teacher, um, learn and engage in that learning process. Um, and uh, it's, it's meant to be a way in which we can change, transform, and improve our world. Um, this is sort of a, uh, a conceptual framework. So um, as a teacher, I will do my best to provide um, a positive example of role model to build rapport with students because I believe that. Um, my philosophy is very student-centered, and that is about the student, not necessarily all about the content. Or it's not the um, 
I'll do my best to to um, be an effective teacher, which I think should be based in, in theory um, and, and empirical data of uh, education research, um, and then continuous improvement, which meant I want to instill in my students a love of learning. I think that that's one of the greatest outcomes um, of education, is to love learning. Um, we have like these amazing brains. It's incredible. Um, and so I think that continuously striving to learn more and to, to love learning, um, to become change agents, to become activists in your community um, and engage in the, um, and be good citizens of whatever community you're a part of, and the whole student development. And I think that this together is my idea of what success might be. Um, so I'll talk about the three circle models that I was talking about before. So there's three component, components to a total agricultural education program. Um, so the first one being classroom instruction, which is what most people talk about. But total agriculture program is more than that. It's also the FFA, which I'll, I'll talk about, and then the SAE, which I talked about briefly, the supervised agricultural experience. So together, those, those um, components work together um, to create that positive experience. No. Um, I think that the FFA works really well with youth development and youth positive youth development. Um, no. Specifically, no. Um, I'll, this is something I was using for my research, but no. Bandura self efficacy no. theory. We have no. performance accomplishments, we, you prepare, and you have um, an opportunity to, to, uh, to perform. Right? So, in the FFA, there's a lot of um, competitions where students apply their knowledge. So, this is um, like a public speaking example. Um, in which students prepare, they have that experience, hopefully they will increase their self-efficacy or their confidence in accomplishing certain tasks. Um, um, and then they can get a, a war suit out, which also plays put, into motivational theory. Um, and then the FFA advisor plays a crucial role in encouraging, motivating, um, that verbal persuasion and part of their self-efficacy. Um, one thing, however, I will critique of the FFA is that I, I think that I would like to, to focus specifically on um, making a more inclusive environment for students um, and not just appeal to, um, to sort of like the traditional background. I think that if I was in um, the high school that I, 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 just because I didn't come from an agricultural background, I wouldn't be, have been as um, interested in um, the FFA just because I feel like there's sort of a culture and a branding that I don't associate with. So um, as a teacher, I want to experiment and do different things. Um, but I think this is one area which I would like to focus on, is how do we provide a more inclusive environment, and that requires some sort of rebranding, hopefully I can do that, at least at like a micro level of my, my school. Um, so on to the next component, three components in class instruction, <coughs> FFA and it's SAE, Supervised Agricultural Experience. So this is a student-led, student-directed project. It is um, an opportunity for a student to take what they learned in agriculture classes um, or through their own experiences, discover something that they're passionate about, design and develop a project that they can um, use to further their learning, um, and then you know, even you know, make a little bit of that money, which is kind of what I'm too. Um, so I think that this is actually like a great model for education where it is student-led, student-directed, and then it is advised or, or guided by the agricultural teachers to provide sort of a mentorship um, to that. Um, so this is a short video I'm going to play, three minutes um, of my pedagogical highlights. So this is, throughout this semester, we've had the opportunity to practice teaching. So the sound is a little bit low. Hey, Highlight here is uh, one of the versions. 
question trying to first so identify the characteristics that affect your speech. The variability, mixing things up, just don't, don't teach the same way all the time. So the first one was the PowerPoint, this is a, a, a lab introduction to a lab in which uh, we were trying to do uh, inquiry-based learning, in which the student uses um, a scientific method to research or to, to come up with an idea that they can work together and kind of to research it. Uh, this, this, this last one here, um, sort of a problem solving approach, in which you pose a problem and have the students. Uh, you pose a problem and you have the students. The solution, the problem that I, I presented was that I watched you guys at a, a local orchard here, Carnegie Farm, they did not have a good fruit set. They have a orchard. They have orchards there. They didn't have a lot of good fruit sets, so they were trying to decide what happened. Um, so that the, the fruit cannot set well. So the, the problem they had was to, to figure out how that would work. And wanted, what I wanted them to, to diagram was the process of how a flower on an apple tree turns into a flower. Flower up here. Um, so a big thing I think about teaching that I was a little bit nervous about, um, but now I feel fairly confident about is um, classroom management. So there's an agricultural practice called integrated pest management, integrated nutrient management, integrated water management. I came up with this process called integrated classroom management. I'm not trying to say that students are pests by any means, but um, this is the old way of doing it, I guess. I think this might be the new way of doing it. Um, but being proactive is the first step um, versus reactive. Um, to develop a classroom culture of respect, um, I think one of the greatest classroom management strategies is the most, uh, or the most effective classroom management strategy is an engaging lesson. I, I truly believe that's something that I've watched. Um, so, so once you establish that culture, um, to identify the root cause of the desirable behavior when it does occur. Um, analyze why it is happening. Uh, there should be a logical consequence or action associated with that uh, to reinforce positive behavior. Um, and to continue to monitor the situation in the future. This is all how you uh, deal with the past situation. And then documentation, you want to keep records of it. And then if need be, um, bring in other people parents or, or administration. <coughs> so I have some classroom management pic posters over here. The font is really skinny and hard to see. I apologize. Um, so my classroom expectations, I also have them up here on the thing here. So that in this classroom, we're I want, this is sort of what I expect <coughs> my students to, and myself to do, uh, to respect each other, try our best, um, to recognize that we're a team, to learn from our mistakes, um, to create, and to celebrate other successes and then have fun. I think the learning should be fun. Classroom procedures is how we kind of ensure that our our students are stay on, on task and, and get the most out of it, um, out of the lessons that they can So we're gonna come in and do the bell work, just a bell work is just something um, simple that as students trickle in from the hallways that they're immediately starting to engage in the lesson. Um, I want them to be ready to work hard and have a good time. You're like, just come in quietly, take a seat, we'll talk about it later. You go to the bathroom before class, you can't wait to take a toilet seat pass, which may, some of you may have seen that, but it's like an actual toilet seat that people have to carry around, that's the bathroom pass. Just go to the bathroom before class. I, I may change that, because that's embarrassing. Um, at the end of class, you're going to clean up the work, stay busy until the bell rings. It's my classroom management that, um, when the bell rings, you're done. You know, it's my job to, to finish on time, that's my job. Um, and then have an awesome day. Consequences. Uh, the look is the first one, right? Um, then take a break, think about what's going on, <coughs> recalibrate. Um, if you cause a problem, solve it. A logical consequence is a punishment that fits the crime. Something I actually want to add into this is um, what I learned from one of my other cohort members uh, yesterday is like to, to talk to the parents as well. Like call home to the parents, call home to the parents, um, to involve them and sort of build that relationship with them because parents are a, a, a very big man. Parents are an important um, part of student 
fun, right? And then ultimately, now you did it to get a good job. This is, a, this is an example. We were asked to talk about um, a model program. So it's our ideal program, if we, if we got to design um, an ideal program. Um, so year one um, would just be an introduction. Year two would be for plant science or animal science. Uh, and then for agricultural mechanics. Uh, same thing in year three or an ecology and environmental science um, course. And international agriculture and ag issues um, and agroecology um, can be taken simultaneously in the fourth year. Um, the international agriculture and ag issues, I really want to use that as an opportunity to sort of develop that critical thinking, that critical pedagogy that, that Paul Greer said, um, and sort of addressing our own paradigms, um, the source of our ideologies, um, and to deal critically with them. So that's something I also like to experiment with in the classroom to, get, to try to close that theory of praxis gap that is kind of prevalent with that. Um, we, have to do a well -lit, we have to do a project um, in one of our classes, the AE 350, the not saw your face off, the band saw. So I made this. I never knew how to weld until this class. So that was actually really fun. Um, this is the soil probe um, to use um, to sample the soil. So you just go ahead and push that in. You have the soil core that you can, um, you can tell like, the different properties and then send to a lab to be analyzed to um, manage the, the nutrients. So we developed a, a program, for a project, sorry, um, there. This is a recruitment material. You guys have seen this in the morning a little bit on time. It's kind of embarrassing, actually. Uh, but I want to say, you guys can watch this later. But I want to have a social media officer um, as an, in the FFA in our chapter to sort of you know, take pictures and, and videos and to put that out on, out on social media to involve the community. One of the many ways to involve the community um, in the chapter and outreach to middle schools and, and as much community. Uh, involvement as possible. Also be awesome. Like have a great program, have people have fun, and I think it'll naturally come. If you build it, it will come. Right? Um, here are some opportunities for community involvement. Um, I think that community is a really um, amazing thing for our, our social welfare. So I want to involve the community in the, in, the, in the program as much as possible through apple blossom festivals or apple harvest festivals. Another thing I want to do is I want to plant a whole bunch of fruit trees on the school campus um, because love fruit trees and kids need food and good food. Um, community gardens I think would be great. Workshops I think would be really awesome to, if I could eventually get it to the point where the students are developing and, and delivering the workshops to the community members. Um, I think that would be great. Um, a community-based unit of instruction um, is something in which, um, in which we invite community experts in um, to help us teach one of our units. So this is a grant that I, I wrote um, to expand the pollinator garden that my the school at home teach, to so expand the pollinator garden and also buy an observation beehive, um, which is actually a hive that um, is connected to the outdoors by, by an entrance way. The bees can't come in the classroom. So this is actually in the classroom. The bees are in that and outside the classroom. So you can actually see like how it works. You know, when they, when they, uh, you can see the, the work for bees and, and then, you know, uh, Filling the, the cells with honey and glory. Um, where I'm, where am I going? Um, I'm going to, to teach my first real teaching experience. I'll be student teaching at Bald Eagle High School, which is about a half hour from my home, um, up north a little bit. So this is um, the area. It's a really, really gorgeous area. Um, you guys are probably down there. My cooperating teacher is uh, Todd Biddle. Um, and Jane Thompson is also um, a member of the Agriculture Department, but I'll be working with Todd Bill, which I'm really excited about. Um, <coughs> a little bit about that chapter, um, using chapter officers, and um, these are some of the awards that they've won recently, um, the past couple of years. Um, they focus a lot on uh, animals um, and animal, animal husbandry. Um, so they have, these are students with their SAE animals, um, they have a horticulture program there that I'm excited to teach. Um, and uh, Todd Fiddle is a um, uh, goat expert, I guess you could say. Um, this is, these are the courses about, these are the classes I'm teaching up here. Horticulture, animal science, introduction to ag, and ag leadership within the units, which are like the, how the course is broken up. Um, and then to close, sort of my reflection on some of my, the areas in which I would like to improve. 
um, and some strengths. <coughs> I'm very positive and optimistic about this experience, which I think is uh, good, I guess, right? Um, I do feel like I, I was struggling at the beginning with the idea of how I would manage students, but I feel more confident now, so I think that's a strength. Um, as far as areas for improvement, um, I don't have a lot of background in animal science, but I'm grateful that uh, Mr. Biddle um, has a lot now, so that's something that an area that I'd like to improve on, um, and then, then the teaching methods in general. Um, some of my goals, I'll go through them real quick. Um, reflection is, is, I believe, is very important as part of the learning process, and uh, David Cole's learning process of reflection. Um, reflect daily and then write a blog completely um, as part of that reflection process. Um, be active in the teach act community. Had a lot of help from from other people along the way, so I want to kind of contribute back. Um, within agriculture, things you have to you have to organize and manage things really well because you, know, you, you can't plant um, your vegetable crops in December when you're teaching about that. So I want to develop a detailed plan with the calendar, refine the teaching methods. Um, be prepared to teach and then run a complete and total successful agriculture program with the three circle model um, and then have fun. Um, so Dr. Foster talks about how are we going to leave the wood pile higher. So I was thinking about this. Um, and that idea that I have, I think this is an awesome wood pile, by the way. Um, was I would, I would, I'll talk to the panel later, but uh, a mentorship program. So student teachers um, who are, so this time next year, hopefully I'll be in the classroom, right? So, and there's going to be a new cold court coming through in a few of you in this room. So sort of develop um, like a mentorship program in which we help and we can be there to commiserate when we have to work through some of the, the assignments. Um, so that's a, an idea that I'm having out of the community. Um, I want to thank everybody um, who's helped me along in the process um, and endure this journey. The panel especially for dealing with my Attitude, <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you all very much. If not, I'll pull while you're thinking from one of the questions that was generated online from our Facebook live feed. Michael, you were asked, uh, they agreed with your assessment of wanting to make FFA more inclusive. The question was, specifically, could you name one strategy or how you would work to make FFA more inclusive on your local level? Um, I think that that's, that's a great question. I think that um, because I don't have a traditional agricultural background, I sort of have a unique perspective. Um, maybe, I don't want to say like an outsider perspective, but I, I, I kind of see how other people may, may perceive it FFA. And I think that um, we've talked about how teachers um, how teachers play an important role in developing the culture of an agricultural program. So I want to try to, to the best of my ability, involve students who may not be traditionally, um, who may not be traditionally inclined to, to pursue agriculture and try to, to, to show them that agriculture is a large industry and it doesn't just fit into one pattern. Along the topic of inclusion and respecting diversity, the question for the teacher education again is, how would you communicate effectively with an administrator or a parent who didn't share the same worldview or political view as you? Um, yeah, I think I definitely have to be a little cautious, especially when dealing with administration, because um, I do have some different ideas about education. Um, I think that I need to reassure them, because they have an obligation to make sure that they quality education that is not riddled with political rhetoric. Um, and I will definitely maintain that professionalism in the classroom. Um, I, I, I did throw some political stuff out there, but I thought the audience was probably okay to do that. But um, I think that I will, I will be more careful in the classroom when I'm dealing with young students until I can develop a rapport with them and I can understand so that as I'm developing um, an, uh, an environment in and culture of inclusion to non-traditional students, I don't exclude traditional non students. Thank you. Question from the audience. Yes, ma'am. Question. So teaching in general has a content knowledge that you have an expertise and an interest in improving on. It also involves so much more of the interaction um, with the youths, with the youths, with the parents, and kind of with um, just the development of an individual. 
Can you share your strengths and uh, challenges with improving that individual sense of self? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so one of the reasons why I want to teach agriculture is to develop that for the relationship with the student. And I believe in a student-centered philosophy. Um, so I think that some some prime examples are, um, as I said before, I really love the idea of SAE, um, in which the student and the, the, the teacher get to interact and develop a program individually with the student. So I think that. Um, working um, on an individual basis with each student will help me to you know, understand more about their passions and likes and their dislikes, what's going on in the family, you know, how I can help. Um, so I think that just being that person that can, um, that they can count on and they can trust, um, but I also see as, as a role model, I think that that's one of my goals as an educator. We have a question from your cooperating teacher, Mr. Biddle. And the question is, you mentioned a desire to start a school orchard. What would be a sample framework or process you would put into place to help make that vision become a reality? Okay, great. Um, so, first of all, I think you need, I know you need permission from the administration and also you know, community, um, something that the community thinks would be important. But I've actually looked at some grants and how to make this actually possible. Um, one, one of the pathways in which I would, I would pursue is the Plant a Tree Foundation in which they, uh, they donate trees specifically for this purpose for schools or churches or um, other organizations. <laughs> um, another one is I'm teaching a grafting unit in, um, my, my, uh, in, a, in a plant propagation unit. And so I would love to, to get some apple and other fruit tree root stocks have the students, train the students, have them perform whip and comb grass um, with varieties that they collect from uh, around State College or, or other places. Um, and slowly throughout that way, you know, plant 10 or 20 or 50 trees each year. And I think that that would be an amazing learning experience that could provide a context for our additional learning. Thank you. Questions from the audience? From the teacher education panel? So, going along the same lines of you establishing an orchard, can you give an example of how it would transcend all three components of that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a great question. Um, so the question is, how does it, how does planting an orchard, how, do, how, can, how, do that, how would that involve each component of that three-circle model that I had talked about? Uh, so in the classroom, I'll start with that because that's the easiest, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about orchard management, integrated pest management, um, propagation, irrigation, um, nutrient management, um, harvest folks offers a myriad of opportunities to, to talk about agriculture and have that as a, as a learning laboratory. Um, within FFA, um, they compete with, it, with career development events um, in agronomy and fruit uh, vegetable production process. Um, but then also, I, I mentioned doing workshops in which the, the students can facilitate um, workshops in the fall um, talking about, and fall and the dormant period, talking about fruit, how to prune your fruit trees, um, harvest festivals. Um, so opportunities for that, the, the members of the program to uh, interact with community members, um, to deliver and prepare workshops and to speak with, with adults, which I think are, are all skills that are important to have. Um, and then finally, um, a supervised agricultural um, experience. Um, a couple of ways um, I would uh, hope that maybe some of that students would express interest in um, perhaps completing a uh, school-based enterprise SAE in which they would um, work um, on, the, on the farm, on the student orchard, the, the school orchard, um, during the summertime when they're off um, as, as part of a paid work experience. Um, and then also if they were to, to plant, <coughs> plant some apple trees um, at their parents' house and um, develop a farm market for, for that as well. Two Question from the audience in the room. Question from the teacher education panel. Dr. Ewan. Yes. So, Michael, as you go into your own program, there's a lot that you have to plan for. And one of the um, opportunities for state funding is uh, here in Pennsylvania is through Chapter 339, which we spent a lot of time on. Um, could you just share with me uh, your approach for managing that um, funding opportunity uh, 
as a single teacher potentially in a, in a school with um, ag being the only program that, that receive, receives that CTE funding. So how would we go about yeah, ensuring that chapter 59 is in good order? Yeah, how, how would you be successful in managing that? Chapter 339, just for the members of the audience that aren't familiar, is um, an accountability platform through the um, state and national education department um, to ensure that learning experiences are effective. Um, to receive funding, as you can probably imagine, um, an agricultural department <coughs> classroom is there's a lot more uh, material needs um, than say like an English or a math classroom um, because it is very experiential in nature. Um, so anything from, from, from equipment to tools, um, welders, and table saws, and things like that, um, it's, it's very expensive. So um, how I would ensure that at, if I were to go into a program and I would be the only teacher, it's sort of a daunting task, that it's, a, it's a lot of paperwork. Um, but luckily, um, I had the class with Dr. Young, which we went over step by step that process. Um, so I think that. Um, Time as, as teachers, especially as agriculture teachers, um, there's a lot that's ex expected of you. So um, working with my advisory board, my advisory committee, um, with anybody that would, would help me within the school administration, um, counting on others, on, on other students, or on other teachers um, for advice on how to, to go about that process. Um, and also them just trying to delegate as much as possible so that I have time to, to focus on teaching. Thank you. I think this will be your last question, Mike. When all is said and done, what do you want students, colleagues, administrators, parents, and community members to say about you as a student teacher? That's a great question. Um, I think that as part of my, my personal mission um, is to bring about positive change in the world. Um, so what I want my students to say is that they were able to take advantage of opportunities that were provided because I was um, a dedicated and effective teacher. Um, I would hope that the community members would say that um, I was an agent in which um, promoted community and uh, um, social um, community. Um, and I think just, just in general, I think I would love for people that have met me um, to say that um, I played a role in, in making a Give a round of applause for Mr. Cage.